All right. Before we even start, because I'm on walk, so I'm not going to get shot. Um, uh, did, did you just film that? No, 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 no. I've just started now. Hello, my name is Dan, uh, and I am the guitarist and songwriting contributor <laughs> to Lunar Ray. Uh, how many years have you been playing, Dan? I've been playing properly since I was 14, so 16 years, but I did start playing when I was like eight. Did like Spanish guitar when I was like eight, but I hated it. And my guitar teacher was not a very nice person, so I, uh, he used to bully me when I was a student. So I just basically was just like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. So I stopped, didn't play for years, and then picked it up at secondary school when a girl saw me carrying a guitar. Early guitar hero? Earliest guitar hero, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, because I saw the, I think it must have been the music video for American Idiot, and just remember thinking that was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. So, yeah, pretty much haven't put it down since then. How do you go about writing a riff? Ooh, how do I go about writing something? So, what would be my, my kind of checklist into how I get into writing a riff? Number one is learn a shit ton of riffs. This is this maybe a little bit of an advice thing, but this is how I've gotten into writing a lot of stuff for us. I will sit here and load up Spotify. I know this one feels like an advert for Spotify right now. And let's, for the sake of it, let's go to Fight Start. Like this album that I've got, I've got started here is the last album they did, Behind the Devil's Back. There's a really awesome song on there called Dive, which is very sort of Deftones, Minerva sort of sounding. So I'd sit here, I'd learn how to play that song, and maybe learn a couple of other songs in that sort of vibe, and then eventually my brain overnight will sit and take all the bits that I really enjoyed from each song, like, oh, that chord voicing was cool, I really like that idea for a rhythmic thing, and then I'll wake up the following day, or you know, the next time I go to write, and I will sit and I will take all those aspects that I enjoyed and make them into a song. That's one way of me writing a riff. The other way for me writing a riff is literally sitting here, grabbing the Strandberg, plug it in, and just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. So sometimes I will literally sit here and I'll I will just sit and noodle, just thinking about it would be something like something really really simple, like taking just an odd polymer and just sort of like. A, something that can be repeated at some point. So like one, two, three, two. And just loop that. But change chords when the bars change, or change them on different points. And just have a bit of fun, like, all right, how can I make something a bit interesting for myself? Get a bit more fun, I'm gonna load a picture of me and you. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's, like, I still, I still think that's our best fire ever. <laughs> I still think Kill that, is, that one. I think, our rap album. I think that is the best fire we've done because it makes it look so cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, who knows what these two are going to do? Favourite bit of any Lunar A track so far? Mm, my favourite bits. Well, why don't I just scroll down our Spotify page? <laughs> Probably on Stir, the bit where it's the, like that, that that double chorus, the second half, when we go to that sort of more open riff and you sing the fly like an idol. That verse, really, really love. That part is probably one of my favorite parts on one of our recordings. Close second, which I am gonna say is the last chorus of Glass when you did your scream. The first time I heard that, I was like, this is fucking sick. Yeah, made me very excited for what's coming up. Could you maybe show us uh, the hardest riff to play in Lunar A? Yeah, sure. Which one's the hardest one? Probably on Stir. It's not so bad now. When I first came up with it, I wrote it at a slower tempo and didn't require me having to wiggle my fingers around quite as fast. Hey ho. So it's the chorus riff where it does the sort of E flat major nine up to a G minor nine voicing. And it's that. When I first wrote that, I think I was sort of doing more sort of about maybe like 125. But then obviously we came up with Stir and I was like, oh, that would work really well there. And it's 148 BPM 
and triplets at that speed for me is like just getting into uncomfortable zone so that that's all vibe <laughs> That's the fucking hard bit. But yeah, probably that part. Funnest bit to play on guitar for any track? Funnest bit to play. Just some brief highlights, but from Glass, I really like that because it's just a fun little bend. Oh, it was on that song as well. Though. That's also a really fun bit to play. And then probably on Flex, the... That whole section, I really enjoy playing as well. Why you want it to start Lunar Ray, maybe? Me wanting to be involved in Lunar Ray, it definitely started from the sort of first demos that Jamie sent me for like little ideas he'd come up with. He sent me essentially what is up to the end of the first chorus for Squander and uh, up to the end of the first verse of Paint the Waves from our first EP. I remember hearing both of them and I think like the first thing that made me interested in it was because it was different from everything else I'd ever done before. Pretty much typically like as far as guitar playing has gone for me, I've always just been in like very much like guitar heavy rock bands or indie bands or I was in a like a pop funk band sort of thing, stand band instrumentation but this was my first time like hearing like what can be done on a computer, like sounds a little naive but it was pretty much like the first time I'd heard the capabilities of like writing using like synth plugins and using a computer to you know its best ability. So when he sent me those little demos, it was kind of like, well, this is you know this is cool. This is like something different for me to sink my teeth into. And it was kind of like, all right, well, I'm going to have a bit of a challenge, sort of like adjusting to writing like this. But I'm I'm up for it, and I, I like what he's done. And then I think it pretty much like sort of was cemented like I wanted to do Lunar Ray was pretty much as we finished writing. Uh, paint the waves because that was the first song we actually worked on um i'm in a different tuning but when we'd sort of been through the intro and then sort of reworked some parts and added all those little guitar runs and then we added that verse bit which is that five picking thing it was like cool that makes it sound kind of interesting to me and now it's got that guitar thing in it that i connect to on songs and then we wrote the chorus which started from me doing that Literally that simple little hit on my face. <laughs> that simple little chord pattern, but it was like, cool, well, that's just helped make it go from this fun, like, little synthy pop sort of vibe to, like, and now it's a rock song sort of sounding thing. And then from then it just developed and things started mixing, and then we added the guitar solo, and I got that off. And I got to do a little noodly. And pretty much once we'd finished mixing that track, I just remember thinking, like, this is, this is fun. I really like this. This is definitely what I want to do musically. And then I think from there it was we worked on Sweet Life, which was again similarly like Jamie had got bits and I just sort of added to them. Then I sent him Flex and then we worked on Squander and added that whole... Been a while. That whole little bit. And I think, yeah, but I'd say like the reason I wanted to do it was the result of Paint the Waves being finished. And then the whole EP being taken care of and it was like, yeah, I'm keen. I want this to be what I do. What did you make of Jamie when you first met him? Wow. The very, the very first time we met was in a bar. It was in a Weatherspoons in Guildford. Being massively honest. <laughs> being massively honest. I didn't really have an opinion of him. It was, the first time we met, it wasn't like a friendship sparking. It was two people being introduced. We've got a, a mate, both of us, that I went to ACM with. That he introduced me to Jamie and he was like, oh, this is my mate Jamie. He's like, oh, hey man, how's it going? And you chat and you're like, oh, I like that comedy. Oh, that's funny. Oh, it's such a good film, isn't it? But it was never like, wow, I'm going to work with this guy one day. It was just two people hanging out. But then the first time that I hung out with him properly, was when I went to hang out with him. He he used to have a recording studio in a caravan. I remember going around and hanging out with him there, and just hanging out in the studio, being around him in his space. And he always seemed like he knew what he was. <laughs> he always seemed like he knew what he was doing. You know, as a producer, like he was very switched on musically, and 
he'd show me stuff that he'd written and it would all sound really cool and he'd be like, all right, nice. You're a songwriter. I'm a songwriter. Cool. One, I think one of the first times we hung out, he made me perform one of my songs to him in his caravan, which was a little bit, a little bit odd. You That's did. not true. That is one thousand percent true. What, what did I say? I, well, I told you I was in the band called Joe. I'm not looking at the camera for this. This is addressed to you now. <laughs> well, I, I was. In, this, was this was when I was in Joe Serious, yeah. and I told you that we we were recording our EP, and I told you we'd got that song face to face, and you were like, oh, "Can you play it for me?" And I was like. Not really, because it's quite like sort of funky, heavy guitar thing. And you were like, oh, well, you, can you just do like an acoustic version? So I winged a complete acoustic version for you. Where I got really? Like, yeah. You've never done that before? Never played it acoustically. Never even properly played it on guitar before, and I had to wing a whole acoustic Oh, mate, it sounded so good. For you. you did. What do you mean, Sasu? You didn't remember this until I just told you. No, no, I remember it. <laughs> and then we got to know each other, and I think now that he's uh, a very important person in my life, we're like brothers which can be a good thing and a bad thing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. You should get to meet him. He's gonna do one of these soon. You should get to meet him through that. And I'll ask him loads of questions. Ugh. You can find out all sorts of stuff to do with him. What was the best piece of advice that you've received from someone? I'm gonna say it was from my parents. And it was down to me deciding I wanted to do music as a career. And I remember saying to them, like, I, you know, I want to do this when I'm older, right? like, I want to go to university and study music. And the best piece of advice they gave me was like, look, it doesn't matter what you want to do in life, you can do literally anything you want, but you better work hard. Because if you don't work hard at something that you care about, you're not going to work hard at anything. So that was pretty much the one thing I just remember, always remember, like, if I want to do this, I just have to always make sure I'm working hard. Well, thank you very much for watching this video of me doing a slightly awkward interview with Jamie. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, there's a button down below that you can click, that would be awesome, we'd love for you to do that. Also, if you check our description, there will be links to all our social media pages like Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, all those places that you can check us out. Thank you very much for watching.